And we are back on the back, Troy, with our Tuesday co-host, Jason Goodman. And Jason, we're just talking about things that might sway the election. And we didn't mention yeah. in one headline, but we're not getting into now, but Bronny. Let me say oh, that. Yeah. This LeBron James thing could have a big impact. Well, let's talk about that a little later. Joining us sure. now online, straight out of Moscow, is our good friend, great friend of the show, reporter, and she's in Moscow, Sonia Van Der End. Hey, Sonia, how you doing? Fine, thanks. How are you? I'm good. So let's play the clip we got about this drone attack on Moscow and see what you want to add to it. Okay, oh, so okay. Zach, hit the, hit the clip on the drone attack on Moscow, please. Hit it. Ministry has said after drone fragments were found near the city center, the mayor said no one was injured in the strike. On the morning of July 24th, an attempt by the Kiev regime to carry out a terrorist attack with two unmanned aerial vehicles against facilities in Moscow territory was foiled. Two Ukrainian UAVs crashed after being suppressed by means of electronic warfare. There are no casualties following the foiled terrorist attack by the Kiev regime. Well, for more on this, let's cross live now to RT correspondent Umaima Isha, who is at the scene at the moment. Uma, good morning to you. Um, can you give us more details on the incident, please? So, as the Russian officials have said, two Ukrainian UAVs were suppressed this morning in Moscow. Now, two of them fell in two different places. One of them fell quite close to the Russian Defense Ministry, and the second one fell in the location that we are uh, at right now, but uh, in the southwest of Moscow. But uh, according to uh, Russian officials, traffic is restricted, and as we can see it right now in the location, and uh, the officials have also said to people to change their routes instead. But, you know, this is not the first time that Ukraine has the uh, carried out terrorist attacks uh, in Russia. We've seen uh, terrorist attacks in Crimea. We've seen in St. Petersburg, in Moscow. Most notably, the one in Moscow was against the uh, Kremlin uh, in May, early May, where no one was injured. But let's take a little look at other terrorist attacks that uh, Ukraine has carried out in Russia. <laughs> Now, the Kremlin has accused the West of turning a blind eye when it comes to Ukrainian terrorist attacks, especially when we consider the latest one in uh, Crimea, the deadly one in Crimea, where civilians were injured and dead. And the mayor of Moscow, when it comes to today, today's terrorist attack, he has said that there are no uh, damages and that the... Um, the drones have crashed into non-residential buildings after being suppressed by the Russian Defense Ministry. And, of course, uh, emergency services and police are on the scene monitoring the situation right now. So, Sonia, that's an RT report on the latest terror attacks. What you, can you add to that? Well, not so much. I came back last night. I was uh, five days in uh, the Donbass. I was in Mariupol, Donetsk City, everywhere. But when I came back, it was all normal. I mean, I came back by train because, you know, uh, flights are not going yet to uh, Rostov because you always have to go uh, via Rostov. But as I know, and as I went a little bit through uh, the town today because I had something else to do, but everything was quiet and yeah, there was no panic or something. People just went to work. And also at the trains, there was the normal security, but not extraordinary security or something. So, yeah, what they said, I think it was uh, the, the large of the, the most one was hit at the uh, Ministry of Foreign Defense, uh, Ministry of Defense, sorry. I uh, went last year a lot of times. I uh, came, went from the Ministry of Defense when I went to uh, the Donbass because there was... The press was, you know, collected there. But yeah, I've, everything functions normal, thank God for that. And that's what happened the last uh, drone attacks as well. So yeah, it's actually terrorism what they say. And I think they are trying to hit something, but I think they're, thank God, not successful until now. So 
Yeah, everything functions normal. That's what I can uh, what I can say. And I, I gotta say, John, sorry, it doesn't seem like a serious attack, but on Ukraine's part, it seems like a peace order, basically. You you, you don't send one drone into Ministry of Defense. I mean, Russia, when they attack, send them barrage of missiles and all that stuff. Jason, does it seem like Ukraine's serious? Well, it seems like they're desperate. I, I think we've heard mm -hmm. when they say a drone, we don't really know what that means. It sounds sophisticated and advanced, but what we've heard is that they've been modifying sort of obsolete Soviet era jets to be able to fly them remotely. And yeah, that's a drone, but how effective is it? And obviously if they can see it coming and, and prevent it from doing any damage, it's not very effective. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and also- It is effective mm -hmm. at escalating, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. And I, I think, uh, because I wasn't here, of course, it was five days in uh, in the Donbass and, uh, yeah, there's still, uh, you can hear when I was in the city of Volnovakha and Mariupol and Donetsk city, as of st steel factory, you could hear still the artillery uh, fire, uh, yeah, a little bit further away because the front is yep. now so moving. Let's talk about that trip, Sonia. I want to talk about, about that. How long had it been since you've been in the Donbass before this trip? How uh, long had you been Six there? months somehow. Six months somehow. Six months. Yeah. And what had changed in those six months? What did you notice the first thing that changed? At the improvement of uh, rebuilding cities. Like I was in Mariupol and I was there first in April 2022 and now back after more than one year there. It was great. It was really, uh, yeah, it's building everywhere. Even uh, the parts that were heavily damaged in the city center are now being renovated when there can be renovations, of course. Huge new apartment blocks are there. I sold them myself. I made videos from it and photos. And also in Volnovakha, that's uh, from when you go from Donetsk city uh, down south to Mariupol. It's between Mariupol and um, Donetsk city. Also great improvement, a whole new school the, or the old school. But it's now yeah, being rebuilt and uh, a lot of things you can see the rubble is gone and people are on the streets again. And even in Donetsk city, that was very, very terrible. That was also alive again. People are going out, uh, having food, uh, having a great time, uh, doing their shopping. So the only problem is a little bit the water there, but OK, that's uh, normal. That will be fixed, too, I suppose. And the greatest for me was to go back to the uh, Azov Steel factory. There I saw some very interesting things because we are now more than one year further than last year, of course, and they discovered all new entrances and basements. And well, that's great. And they were making uh, a documentary about me, the Russian uh, TV here. And uh, so you can maybe in one week, two weeks, you can see it all on this in this documentary about what I have visited and what I have discovered in the Ass of Steel factory. And so, yeah, I saw a lot of new things. That sounds great. And I, am I correct that Mariupol is actually a kind of resort city? It, it's seen as being, it, when peace comes uh, towards this destination. Is that right, Sorio? Yeah, it's a beautiful city. It's on the Azov Sea. So before everything started, especially military operation, before Ukraine uh, bombed or uh, put it with shells and rockets, it was a, a tourist resort. You can see the beach there. People went to the beach and think now when it will be rebuilt, it, people will go to the beach again. And that look will be beautiful. Same is uh, for Bertyansk, that's a bit further down close is going to uh, direction of uh, Odessa. It's also very nice. There were beautiful uh, beaches, uh, resorts. So I think maybe in a few months or at least one year somehow, we can see that it will be beautiful resorts again, like it used to be in the early days. So what do you think, Jason? Are we vacationing in Mariupol this year? <laughs> maybe. maybe. <laughs> it could but be. Azovstal plant. That's interesting. I know that they had mm -hmm. uh, kind of taken that a long time ago. Sonia, was there any additional evidence of Nazi stuff found mm -hmm. in the in the steel plant? Yeah, there was. And uh, yeah, I saw a lot of a lot of things. I saw uh, 
I, I don't know if you heard the story about uh, the freezing truck, the truck where all the bodies were in, or I've seen that one. So, but yeah, I'm not going to reveal everything because, you know, the people will be uh, disappointed when I do that, who made the documentary. They uh, invested a lot of time in me. So in one or two weeks, you will, you can watch it and uh, you can see it all. But yeah, a lot of things uh, I saw. Oh, wow. I was the first one to see it, actually. The first journalist who uh, went down in the basements everywhere. And yeah, also horrible parts. Wow, wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Also, other horrible part I have seen that was uh, in 2014 already, there were uh, torture chambers, not at the Azov steel plant, but at uh, Mariupol from the SBU. So I saw that one. And remember the uh, airport at Mariupol? There was heavy fighting going on in 2014. And they had something that they called the library with all the torture chambers as well. So I was there as well. So. Yeah, I made quite a trip, you can say. <laughs> well, where will people be also, able to see that documentary? Well, I will share it with everyone when I once it will be there. What they say, one or two weeks, okay. because you know it needs a little bit of time, of course. So, I will share it here with you everywhere, so you can share it with uh, everyone. No problem. Mm -hmm. Well, do we English subtitles? If, if they only were following the Russia-Ukraine thing since the last February, if they only are recently following it, they might not have known this, but Mariupol was a major Nazi headquarters, right? Azov was really based in Mariupol. Is, huh. that, is that right, Sonia? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. It was the headquarters of uh, the fascist wow. or neo-Nazis. It was the Azov battalion who were hiding in the plant for a few months. And they were fighting yeah, against the Russians. And also they held some uh, residents hostage. We don't know exactly how many. Yeah, approximately, I think, 300 people were in there. And the most horrible part, I now so I can say little, that was also torture chambers down there for the residents. So it was really yeah, awful to see. And when I first was there last year, uh, you could see the rem remnants of the these uh, as of the battalions. Uh, my Kampf was there. Uh, yeah, Nazi reading books, uh, fresh, uh, also instructions from NATO commander. So yeah, it was really uh, yeah, it was the headquarters of the new Nazis, we can say, and people in Mariupol. Yeah, who I spoke to last year, they yeah, they told terrible things what happened there. And the West is saying, no, they're not fascist. Well, we have the evidence there that they they really are neo-Nazis and they're really supported by the West. Jason. I'm just wondering when Putin and Lavrov and all these guys, I mean, I, I've never seen uh, you know, political leaders exercise such restraint. It, it seems like they would be well justified in doing some retaliatory action. I guess the only reason they haven't is that they feel like it would be uh, just a huge war. I don't know. What do we think? What are they? When are they going to fight back against the people who are actually doing this? Well, yeah. What What can I say? I mean, uh, I think uh, they are gaining time now and we have to show the world, the Western world, what, what is really going on there. And this, this is our task part of journalists, not only me, of course, we had other great journalists who uh, they have made documentaries as well, or they were there and they were in other places. And well, I, th I think they are fighting also in the economic way, like the grain deal now, because most of the grain went to Europe, yeah, this is or the West, uh, especially the country where I was born, the Netherlands. And uh, they're now all saying, you know, oh, Africa, oh, the poor people there will not get any grain anymore. They have hunger, but they, they themselves had the, the majority of the grain. So this is the hypocrisy of the West, of course. But also, uh, well, we, we now see the escalation maybe going on with Poland. I mean, Poland, what's, I said that a long time ago already, Poland wants to occupy the West of uh, Ukraine. So I think in the end, there will be no Ukraine anymore because the other part is, of course, the new Russia and the other part will be yeah, Poland, Ukraine. Yeah, I don't know how they want to call it. So, of course, uh, if it is going to escalate, well, we have the nuclear option and they all the time blame Russia that they were going to uh, push the button or throw the bomb. But I think the West is so desperate and the Ukrainians are so desperate on the battlefield that 
you know, it, they might hit it first because now we heard today that there were some, uh, yeah, I think that uh, they did something at the Zaporizhia nuclear plant as well. Uh, the International Atomic Energy Agency found evidence that there were grenades there or they, yeah, something was, I didn't get it quite good what it was all about because what I said, I just came back last night. But yeah, so I think this is what they did with the Kakova dam as well. So, but uh, Russia will retaliate for sure because uh, he was, you know, you see what is happening in Odessa last days. Yeah, what what is happening in Odessa? Talk about that. I've see, seen some stuff on the news even about that. And it seems like, again, they're doing very targeted strikes in Odessa. What's going on, Sonia? Well, they again, of course, they always blame Russia, you know, the cathedral there. That's OK. Russia did it, they say. But Russia said, no, it's not. We did not do it, but it's from the Ukrainian side. Something went wrong there. But Russia uh, bombed or uh, drones, drone attacks were at uh, the grain silos. Uh, there were at military strategic points. There were attacks that, that that's for sure. This is what Russia is doing all the time. Military uh, important objectives and so on. So this is what is happening now in a very uh, big way every night. I mean, I don't know every night, but there are a lot of drone attacks. Yeah, since I think a few days already. So I think they want also to stop because the grain silos are there. They want to stop that, uh, you know, because of the problem with Turkey now that the grain is going out to Europe again. This is, of course, what Ukraine wants. So they're trying to boycott this as well saying no to the grain deal and trying to boycott that any ship is going out because they said any ship what is there in the black sea it will be a target and so this is this is what's going on actually now sonia do you know if they're allowing shipments of bud light i <laughs> Well, I, I, I think, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's yeah, there are ships, a lot of ships in the Black Sea, of course. And uh, I mean, um, we know. The thing, I don't think Bud Light's going. Yeah. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think, Jason? Could starving countries take Bud Light, do you think? I, they, they had it this morning. I saw one tall boy can of Bud Light in Whole Foods. And I was thinking, first of all, that doesn't seem like a Whole Foods product. And second of all, what is right. it doing here? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. Now, yeah. Now, so, yeah, actually, I have a serious question for you. No, no. As mm -hmm. if Ukraine won, if Ukraine took Mariupol back, what does Ukraine want to happen to the people who are there who identify as Russian? And what actually, what do they want them to do, the people? Well, they all, I think they will kill them or they deport them or uh, try to maybe a few of them uh, who are important there, who, who they need to collaborate with them forcibly, I suppose. So this is what they want. They want well, pure Ukrainian city so then. Jason, you, you know, a J James Bond villain once said, I don't want to change your mind. I just want you to not die. Remember, mm -hmm. he, he, he said, do you expect me to talk? This is no, I expect right. to die. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's yeah, better. Yeah, yeah, Brain damage yeah. doesn't know my acting. But so, no, I think. So, so that's it. Ukraine thing. just but wants the people there to die, right? Yeah, yeah that sure. is uh, unfortunately. Yeah. But that is what they did, what I saw. I mean, uh, they put uh, civilians in basements, they put civilians in the Azov steel plant. And like I said, the Mariupol airport, the library, the torture chambers, uh, SBU buildings, torture chambers, thousands of people came through them maybe some died but maybe some survived it was women not children but women uh, it were men a lot of men of course so they, they did this already they had real nazi practices there that's is what i saw it's, it's horrible even electrical chair they had so imagine this no, it, it is we horrible think, but well, when you don't know will the it Bandera, convince anybody a philosophy. yeah go ahead yeah. jason well lee will it convince anybody because we've seen, I mean, saying in the United States, because we, we've seen such remarkable ignorance to facts that it almost appears that no matter the strength of the evidence, people who don't like whatever the information might be, they just deny it. Will now, this new I, evidence again, I convince say, anyone? Some people, 
Some people, yes. But I think more people than ever, I'm still sticking by my point on that, that more people than ever know the truth. So, Sonia, are you saying that, that more people know the truth today than the start of this, right? That's what maybe, I'm saying. Maybe, maybe, yeah, most likely they do. Of course, a lot of them maybe have the attitude from, oh, yeah, okay, I, I know it now, but what can I do about it? You know, this is also people. But they know there are more. Of course, there are more because we are we only are a few European uh, and American, just a few here, and we can give them the truth. The, the ones we are going to uh, the Donbas all the time. But okay, we are trying, and I think what I see now in in Europe, especially, it's people are more awake. I don't know about the US, but for you in Europe, for sure, because there are so many things going on right now that maybe they make the connection, you know, to everything. So yeah, it's, uh, this is why we do it. And has anybody any new information about uh, Prigozhin and everything with the Wagner coup? No, as far as I know, he is in uh, Belarus. And uh, well, there was some remarks this week that he would go uh, maybe visit Poland, let's say. Well, I thought Lukashenko said he's not in Belarus, that he went back to Russia. They seem to not know where he is right now. Mm, yeah, there, there's that- a mystery. Maybe, yeah, maybe he's there, maybe he's not, uh, maybe, but yeah, what I heard, he was there, but okay, I mm. mean, uh, this only <laughs> they know, but maybe yeah. he's in Russia, maybe, but he was in Belarus, that's for sure, for a while, and uh, yeah, he, they want to, uh, yeah, quote, visit <laughs> Poland, so you can understand how uh, they're going to visit Poland, it's, but it's just words, of course, a lot of it is maybe propaganda, but but because Poland is now, you know, is now reacting uh, in this way that they want to uh, take Western Ukraine back because it was uh, but, belonged to them. <laughs> no. But Sonia, I know it's late there, and I, when you when the documentary comes out, let's have a get back on to talk about it and okay. let people know where they can find it, and we'll let let, let them know. Sure. Okay. Sure. So sure. thanks for okay. great appearance as usual. Any last questions, Jason? No, thank you for uh, filling us in on all that stuff, Sonia, and stay safe there. Okay, Last I will. Time. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> That's good <Great> idea. <laughs> okay. Have a good night, Sonia. Yeah. You too. Bye. So, welcome to the brony clip. Uh, uh, Browning, forgive me.